Okay, thank you very much uh, for the stand. Uh, first of all, it's a usual thing, but this is quite unusual for me being invited to uh, contribute uh, to this conference by uh, uh, by an old colleague and uh, a very nice lady. Uh, it's an honor for me, uh, Dr. Uh, Pinar Enginjam, because um, I think I I think I'm not. Um, uh, I'm very happy that you did this because uh, age puts on something, not only the wrinkles, but um, it's called generally experience. Uh, so um, before I go, I want to share my experience uh, with the with the new generations. It's a very uh, it's a real pleasure for me. Thank you very much. Why do you think I uh, titled it Time for a New Ethics in Architecture? Uh, because it is. Uh, now I want to minimize this. Uh, okay, now. Um, and because it is really the time. And if you are expecting um, uh, a very well um, organized, uh, speech from me, forget about it, because um, this is not uh, an ordinary paper to be sent to the journals, because it would, if had it been sent, uh, it would have been desk rejected. It is a manifest, and I'm very happy to share the manifest with you. Now, Everyone, everyone, uh, the elderly generations have a, a specific theory of her or his own. And usually they adopt uh, the Vitruvian uh, triad right in the middle. Uh, as for my reading of Vitruvius, uh, there, there is already uh, the the meaning there, where it's hidden uh, in uh, in uh, aesthetics, but it is also hidden in firmness. Mm -hmm. Do we uh, keep up uh, with ethics? Are we as the world? And plus, there is something uh, I have. I have to add mm. a diagram uh, that it is complicated. It is not a triad as well as it is complicated. On the right hand side, we see the uh, uh, the internal side of architecture, the buildings, patterns, types, etc. But it is in, in an abstract moment. It is as complicated as my mind. There are always external forces, uh, influences, social, economic, cultural parameters, knowledge, some both scientific and technical and philosophical uh, developments. Uh, they um, change our views over time, thus architecture changes. Why do you uh, why do I start with uh, such a model? Because a discipline without theory is not a discipline, said Foucault very early in time. The theory in architecture is an organic evolutionary discourse that describes paradigms, practice and production in architecture and has an integrated structure that determines and is determined by the challenge theory. These feedbacks between architectural theory and practice form the basis of the development of the discipline. So to further uh, analyze the discipline uh, on uh, the suggested topic, I have to, uh, I, I, sorry, I have to add an information here. We have to distinguish between ethics and morals. First of all, in order to understand, well, to appreciate uh, my presentation. Ethics and morals are not uh, 
the same thing. Actually, Perez Gomez equals aesthetic with ethics. He's right to a certain extent, but not fully, because lack of, lack, uh, lack of aesthetics does not kill. Lack of ethics kill. So they are not the same things. As for eti the difference between ethics and morals, morals refer, refer mainly to guiding principles, and ethics refer to specific rules, actions, or behaviors. Ethics is a branch of philosophy concerned with people's evaluation and decision-making about the general theories of moral axioms and acts. That's where my paper fits in. Several factors play a role in the revival of interest in ethics. What is fashionable, however, is not ethics as a field of study of philosophy, but the so-called international national and professional ethics. Various professions are trying to develop their ethics, business ethics, press ethics, political ethics, academic ethics, and the like. Discussion on ethics today seems necessary as the first step in addressing the ethical problems we face at every step we take in our private, public, and professional lives. To illustrate the different conceptual contents attached to the word ethics today, I will elaborate on ethical problems in general and in architecture uh, profession specific specifically. By ethical problems, we used to mean the bundle of theoretical problems that philosophy has been dealing with since the beginning of its history, for example, what is virtue? What is justice? Questions are central to Plato's moral dialogues. The phrase ethical problems is also used to describe a kind of problem that is directly related to our da daily lives. The kind of problems that are involved in our relationships with others and with ourselves. One can distinguish at least three primary meanings in which the word ethics is used today in today's debates. First, the term ethics refers to the branch of philosophy that seeks to elucidate questions of value in the types of interpersonal relations and to reveal verifiable, falsifiable knowledge about them. Ethics as a field of study, a field of philosophy is not a field that imposes norms but produces knowledge and a field that sheds light on the problems of value in them, investigating them and revealing knowledge about them. This philosophical knowledge is knowledge without which one cannot develop and apply a, co a code of morality to act in our da daily lives, professional lives and public life in the situations we encounter while protecting human dignity. The second, the word ethics is sometimes used today to mean different and variable systems of norms that are valid in particular group at a specific time and expected to determine the assessment, actions, attitudes, and behavior of the people in that group about each other. These are unwritten norms or understandings of the good and bad that prevail in a particular culture at a given time. These norms and understanding should not be confused with ethical values as is often done today's debates. It would be more appropriate to use the word morality for these unwritten systems of cultural norms. Thirdly, in other contexts, the word ethics is used today to mean some written system of norms or codes of norms created by some for specific purposes. Such documents mm -hmm. consist of norms derived from or selected from existing ones related related to the drive in question and accepted by particular procedures. 
often by consensus. These documents acquire universal validity and are accepted as universal truth. However, the validation of such documents often takes place without a philosophical epistemological evaluation of the norms contained in them. The word ethics in the context of professional ethics is used in this sense. Our norms are not tested. Considering the negative consequences of mixing of concepts for human rights in public life and in legislation that is making laws, I prefer to call these universal norms codes of morality. From what I have said, it follows that the word ethics used in the sense of morality and ethics used in the context of professional ethics are of different epistemological nature. With this in mind, where do we stand? Uh, architecture, of course, we will naturally do, dwell uh, upon architecture. Architecture is a set of varying building tasks. Architecture is a social process that involves stakeholders. Stakeholders are people or organization with rights, shares, claims, or interests in the system of property that meets their needs and expectations. My understanding of morals, user, users are always the most critical stakeholders. Developers, architects, those who approve the construction of buildings and those who take supervision duties and contract certificates with the user take on significant responsibility. Therefore, architects involved in this process must be able to read plans, construction plans, and technical documents. They must learn about building codes, safety regulations, construction innovations, city laws affecting design, etc. Since these, these regulations constantly evolve, they must stay up to date with new specifications and requirements. Most importantly, they must internalize building ethics and practice it. If they do not, earthquake disasters killing 200,000 keep on happening. I wrote about it uh, and um, it's a note to the audience uh, for uh, further uh, understanding of uh, the peculiarities involved in this Brand disaster, uh, one can refer to this. But again, dear all, coming to why I am discussing it these days, the word ethics has become fashionable over the past four or five decades. However, chains and doubts in moral and ethical understanding started when Newton's apple dropped on the ground and intensified with the end of the First World War because it was um, uh, a stage uh, of liberalism. Today, God is out and neoliberalism is in. How do you explain to humanity that something is of real value? This question concerns the social role of the architect. The architect's position can be thought of differently from passivity to effectiveness. The idea that architecture can radically criticize and shape society has been an eternal motive secretly harbored in the art of all social architects. And that's why I'm here. Yes, we can, but how? What is facing us? I must speak uh, about hedging. Conditional interest-based norms. This is the new world. Democracies of the world are revitalized with purpose and unity 
found in mums that we had once taken years to accomplish. U.S. President Joe Biden said shortly after the start of Russia's war in Ukraine. He's very happy that the mission is completed. A war has been started and doesn't and and uh, so many uh, trade going on. But he doesn't care how many people died. The United States and its allies in East Europe and uh, in East Asia and Europe demonstrated remarkably deep resolve and minimal dissension in their support of Kiev. Neither did any nation find the courage to protest the war in Palestine. Turkish President Erdogan could not afford to alienate Russia because Moscow wields influence over areas of significant interest to Ankara, Caucasus, and Syria. Neither was he able to protest the massacre of Islam in Hamas, although he had protest meetings with extreme Islamists in Turkey. 14,200 killed in Ukraine. More than 10,000 people have been killed in 31 days of relentless Israeli attacks on the Gaza Strip. South explores the dangers and new opportunities that the wars and broader returns of greater power conflict present for their countries and regions. Unaddressed, they will become a source of even more significant challenge and disorder in the years ahead, no matter what happens in Ukraine or Palestine. Therefore, across the globe, from India to Indonesia, Brazil to Turkey and Nigeria to South Africa, developing countries increasingly seek to avoid costly entanglements with the major powers, trying to keep all their options open for maximum flexibility. This is hedging. Not a concrete wall, it's a hedge, wishy-washy. We are in a new era, the last phase of your liberalism. Hedging is the normalization of aggression, opportunism, hypocrisy in societies, in interpersonal relations. This I got from foreign affairs, Mal malware uh, and safe browsing uh, ad here, you see. So it's not only the states are in a position of hedging. Even Google does not hedge, but can, can it uh, get rid of all the malware is proposing to do. The life has been quite difficult. Another thing, I will make it very short because I need to discuss the slides as well. You see, I told you it pervades all levels of society, even in the academic life. Uh, my student, it is, it has come to one of my students. Uh, his uh, paper is rejected. Maybe I should close the title uh, of the journal. It's um, a Q1 journal. And uh, the answer comes uh, that uh, they uh, don't reject it uh, on the whole. But they, uh, if uh, given permission, they will send it uh, to uh, another uh, our, uh, journal in Kogan series. And it is this much dollars. This is corruption. This is corruption. Not we are doing here. We have very good intentions, wonderful intentions to, to, to raise people. but. Uh, I know uh, all these difficulties developing 
world, its face fit, because uh, the, the government and people in uh, the education uh, sector of the society uh, asks uh, some published uh, articles uh, to promote them to associate professorship, for example. Therefore, all these uh, students have to pay a lot of money. When I was young, it was an honor to be published in a good journal, and I did this. But now I am so sorry for my students. If you pay, you are published. That is, that is not good. Coming back to the architect's major desire. Of course, I, in terms of stakeholders, we also have lots of architects in the field. Mm -hmm. but as an architect, the, the major desire is to design something that would put them among star architects or to survive and even make a good living. Here, there is the anonymous. And there, of course, this is a caricature uh, of uh, the recent developments, uh, but this is a desire. Let's not hide it. Coming to the products, I strongly doubt it, there is even Zaha Hadid here, and I really like her, many other designs, but this is completed after his death. I don't know who contributed to this design, but do you really want uh, to be an architect who builds uh, such things? Well, nevertheless, governments and people across much of the developing world have met Gauzy pre-world rhetoric with a series of increasingly vehement objections about Western double standards and economy, about decades of neglect of issues most important to them, about the mounting cost of war and of sharpening geopolitical tensions. However, the worst property of hedging is that it gradually conditions and shapes society, thereby, thereby morals collapse. It's no longer easy to refine professional ethics and ethics in general. Nevertheless, some architects are raising their heads in favor of authenticity, professionalism, and independence. Before I show some slides concerning them, I want to add something right at this moment. Uh, all the world we are in, over the world, all of us, or most of us, are dealing with sustainability. Even Norman Foster said that, why did I fight uh, for 15% uh, emission? It should have been zero. And two, they have all these certificates. A couple of people, a couple of people. What's, what's happening to the rest of the world? And I know since uh, Charles Cheng's times that only the 80% the of world's population built for themselves. That is very true. And uh, I told this at FREM conference and uh, uh, the, the uh, professor in charge said, Professor Gur, it's even more than that today. So not is, nothing is really getting better. And also to make the emission law, so many uh, expensive products we have to employ. You must think of that too. What are they? Uh, Dr. Enginjan, could you tell me when I'm left with 20 minutes, please? 
Uh, you have <laughs> they are having fun. On March 15, 2022, Francis Carey became the first African architect to win the Pritzker Prize, the most important award in the architecture discipline. The election of Kerry is not only symbolic in a time of identity demands where the institutions that make up the mainstream are required to more faithfully represent the social, cultural, and sexual realities that make up our societies, but it also confirms the recent approach of the Pritzker Prize to Jewry. The jury has highlighted statements of short social commitment by reporting from the front architects, such as Shiger Ben, Alessandro, Aravena, Vassal, and Kerry himself. Why was he adorned with this prize? I only included one slide from him, uh, but there are several words. He completed successfully. They were regional. The materials were regional. The social interactions uh, was contained in uh, usual spaces which uh, society used to experience since the beginning. That is very important. There are some early examples. The West uh, on, on the on the left hand side, everyone knows it is Shigeru Benz. He he used to deal with inexpensive uh, materials, and this is a cardboard architecture. It was designed uh, for um, uh, for. Um, For, for a country oh for a country in Australia I couldn't remember now uh, for um, a short period after a big flood devastating flood you know what happened it lives to our day and the people who are using it did not give up they said, we love our church, we love our church. And they uh, um, uh, made some renovations within it and changed it to, to a community center. This is um, Akiodia Education Parks. They made 13, 13 examples of learning centered infrastructure in Colombia. And the designers are Valencia, Herrera, Serna, and Maya. It is 2014. Local techniques, local materials, and local beauty. And fits in the locality very easily. Alborda, I just listened to his presentation very recently as you don't know, but I am uh, one of the members of uh, International Committee uh, of uh, Criticism in Architecture, SICA, in other words. We had um, uh, also congresses, one following the other, and I've seen this, and this reminded me of my hometown. He's from Ecuador. He started with some minor adjustments to the local environment, but uh, uh, he built also uh, a private house for his short stays on his land. And I have watched the process of this, which I cannot share you, I cannot share with you <laughs> due to the time uh, constraint. But this, this person, what did he say? He said, for a century, the West has torn us from our past. Even the understanding of scenery is different between uh, the East and the West. 
he built up a, a small studio with a with a female colleague in uh, his hometown and they started collecting uh, materials uh, from uh, the devastated uh, houses and they use these uh, used materials in many uh, of his uh, designs. The starting point of every design, the memory of paintings, landscapes, life, materials, structures, detail, and crafts are mixed together. This is really amazing. We had everything. Why do we have to pay extra charges for the Western iron, iron and steel and plastics? This is his building, China Economy, uh, Academy of uh, Art Tianshan, I think I would read it. This design, and um, this is uh, not in an urban area. And in his speech, he said, maybe we lost the cities, but we can save the countryside. That is also a very uh, good statement of high moral. He used all the traditional materials with ground skill. He said frequently memory emerged uh, from, sorry, from things at present and from the things at distance. Their arts, their understanding of arts, their understanding of detailing, and their understanding of view is different and very beautiful. Very beautiful. The vistas they have is also uh, used by the architect in some of his designs. And this, the bottom slide, is the general effect of the traditional uh, housing, which gave him a lot of clues. And with this, he also won the Pritzker Prize, the Harbour Art at Museum in Nimbo. When I first saw it, I said, well, it, is, it has no connections with the outside world. Uh, but there are so many other positive things about it. You can see all the materials are collected from other buildings, already torn down buildings. He used them. And when he uh, showed us this slide, he said, these people are not here uh, just because of the building. The building reminds them of their past memories. They gather there. They stroll there. This is something very unexpected. Uh, this is my friend, Michael Hansel who used to teach with Weinstock at the AIA, uh, the, the Prince uh, founded, uh, Prince founded university in London. They are dealing with very different areas, actually, he and Weinstock, and uh, there is another colleague, I can't uh, memorize the name of, um, but he took, what was that year? 2014. He took his students to Mumbai work and and uh, uh, realized a workshop there. And they actually built the building and left the site. Isn't that gorgeous? Architecture of independence and immense emancipation should be our goal. We have, we have such treasures, sorry, 
such treasures. One might argue that in an urban area where uh, the lots are very expensive, uh, can you do it? Well, many architects are building two-story, three-story flats, housing. As you can see from the star uh, slides, they are already four and a, three and a half or three stories. They made it, so we can make it. And uh, we are very much very rich in techniques. The worst thing about this is that these skillful uh, masons have all are all gone. So we have to restudy our past and and uh, uh, convince the new generations to learn them and to exercise with them. This is a formula for independent architecture for me. These are lovely serandars from the northeastern Turkey. They are their houses belonging to the houses. The critical knowledge they supply us is the way of using the techniques, the architectonics. Some of them are still alive, but look at the details. Aren't they amazing? They are amazing. If we cannot do any better, at least we can copy them. They are very skilled. These are from the interiors and some further details. Thank you very much. I hope I have been helpful in aiding you in thinking in another way for independence. Thank you again. Thank you, Vijan. Um, if you have any questions or comments, then enter your seat. <laughs> any questions? Any questions? Um, thank you for, for the great lecture. I would like to know whether there was some sort of systematically a uh, study of ethics from the point of view of the, uh, architecture, because it's not, I don't really know of such study, really from the philosophic, philosophical uh, point of view of architecture, like putting a set of rules and, and the principles and analysis of, of what architects uh, do or do not, or have done, or could do or should not do. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much for the question. <laughs> Uh, first of all, I can suggest some names you can follow in Turkish. Kuchurade is one of them. However, unfortunately, dear, uh, we don't have, from all over the world, we don't have any names we can suggest who are looking at the ethical side, ethical aspect of architecture. This is why I have underlined that it is time. It is time. Uh, that's one way uh, we can we can defend ourselves. But I, I would like to add, if I have a couple of minutes, I also thought about how we could uh, how we could make um uh, students or professors or those involved in some sort of uh, practicing uh, in various ways of practicing architecture how can we uh initiate a change i uh, went through books and articles as you know Oh, you don't know, but there are some websites like Academia Edu. 
And uh, I'm there. If you write my name in Academia Edu, you will be able to see my articles and many other articles. None of them is dealing with ethics. I think the, the uh, Southern Hemisphere should deal with it because it's where uh, it's of prime importance. If you keep on building with foreign materials, for example, you can do such a thing. As you probably know, uh, Bacant University did not give up on me. So I'm still teaching. And whenever my students uh, come to me with uh, uh, the idea that they are going to use uh, roof gardens, I immediately say no. You know why? Because I study uh, which firm is selling them and all the materials are foreign. First, they have developed such things, such information. Secondly, I did something else last year, uh, second semester, thir third year, it was the third year of the students. Uh, I uh, offered them uh, as a, a program of uh, village institute. You can do such things. And um, I asked them to design simple, exchangeable, edible, flexible buildings. Well, they needed help and guidance. But mm -hmm. I need guidance as well because all these masters died. Some uh, people must be interested in these traditional old techniques. I did my best, but there is no uh, compiled book on it that the students might refer. I don't expect a fully excellent one because it is difficult to cover all the tectonics of Serander, for example. Each builder from the past devised his own tectonics. See, it's so rich, a very rich area. In the meantime, I don't mean to say that. Give up all the trend issues. Today, uh, th this year, I offered a museum. We studied, all the groups studied, each of them, one museum. So I'm not uh, completely against of the ideas brought up by the uh, Northern Hemisphere, uh, but the moment you can express yourself with local materials and techniques, do it. One should did it, did it. He is very successful, very successful. We, the records are thrown to somewhere in my country. Nobody knows where. And we also buy the wreckage of Britain. What do we do about it? I have no idea. He saved all the wreckage in his hometown and in Hangzhou. When I visited Hangzhou, it's a pity I haven't seen this building. But Maybe it was before its completion. So it's an idea. Uh, it's an idea for national self-protection. <laughs> it is, um, the point is, how can we make the idea attractive? This guy from South Africa, that the price.
So if you insist on researching, I think anyone uh, from the Southern Hemisphere could get one. Well, this is all I need to say. Just an awakening. I told you at the very beginning that it's a manifesto. It is. Uh, um, can there be, I mean, you know, all the countries have an institution about architecture, like Riva, like Chamber of Architects. So, I mean, if there is an issue within the era, I mean, when we look at past, like for example, in the, after the Industrial Revolution, we see that architects come together at existence minimum, and you know they made CM congresses to solve yes. something yes. at an emergency. So today, obviously, we don't leave all alone, like or oh. <laughs> talking like architects now. But we have chambers, we have uh, institutions that also uh, that provide our protection as well. So. Can it be an option that ethics will, ethics of architecture will be discussed there because all the nations uh, most likely have one institution like that at least. Yes, so yes, okay. yes. So in most countries, they also uh, present their work there in order to get permissions. So that means that those institutions have quite um, powerful impact. On, on, yeah, an impact on the construction uh, of the country. So how about um, discussing this uh, on that level? Because it would make a better sense, I guess. Yes. Very, very correct, very correct. That's true. Uh, but, uh, doctor, uh, the problem is that I am awakening, are they? I have to make them think. I know all of them. But they have been very busy during the last a uh, couple of decades uh, to save the most beautiful buildings and sites of the country. They are fighting. They are at low courts. They are in real danger. But uh, ethics, which I brought up here, is not raised as an issue in my country. Maybe Maybe I can repeat this uh, manifesto to them somewhere. Because whenever I, if I tell them to invite me, they will invite right away. So I have this chance. The regrettable aspect of it is we are too late, 100 years late. And they are all sustainable, Dr. Enginja. That's a pity. There are so many journals discussing sustainability all over the world. We, we got rid of, we dilapidated, you know, we forgot uh, the past and how sustainable it was. All these stoneworks and timberworks. Uh, again, they are searching for some extra measures for which they will pay a lot. I'll do as you as you say, Panar. I'll call them and start this discussion. Maybe I think it is really the now. time. It's really the time. Thank you very much for giving me this chance. Uh, thank you so much for your great presentation.